Woohoo! And we're live once again on another Tuesday. And I have a special guest in the house today because she's not only my colleague, and she's also a friend from way back when. And my, she has the honor of being my very first LinkedIn Live guest. And here she is back again. So, yay, Sue, thank you for joining us today. So, before we tell everybody what we're talking about, can you just introduce? Blah, introduce yourself and let people know who you are and what you do and then we'll get stuck in. Sure. Uh, I'm Sue Clayton. I founded a company called the Solopreneur Academy in 2018 and we help women start, grow and thrive in their solo businesses. And prior to that, I was a freelance writer for 20 years. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. And I've known you for almost 20 years. So that's awesome. That's awesome. So this is our topic today. We're talking about pruning, think like a gardener, folks, pruning your LinkedIn connections. And we're going to have Sue tell us our, her story, which is something that many of us have done. I am, I have done the same thing. So this, listen up, this is something that happens to many of us on LinkedIn, where all of a sudden, we get a weedy garden. We get a garden that's got weeds that are choking our flowers. Our flowers are our lovely connections. Our weeds are like, uh, you know, those, those people who you're like, okay, I really don't like that person. And so anyways, Sue, tell us your story. And then let's talk about what you did to prune that garden. Okay. So um, I had about 15,000 LinkedIn connections. And how I got there, about 10 years ago, one of my friends was laid off from her banking job in Toronto. And as part of her severance package, she went to the like an outplacement firm and she went to a seminar on LinkedIn. And what they told her was, you need to have as many connections as possible. And I thought, mm -hmm. well, that's a good idea. Now, it never dawned on me that she was job hunting, that she was in a different, you know, a different industry, that I was a solo business, none of it. And for basically nine years, I would sit in front of the TV and I would go, yeah, I would accept everybody who, almost everybody who wanted to connect with me. And then I just go like ping, 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 and connect with the people that LinkedIn suggested. Didn't give any thought to my connections, I guess my strategy was to connect with as many people as possible. But, you know, probably every 10, 10 years, we need to revisit stuff like that. So I agree. So when you and I were talking, I guess, in the summer, I was moaning about how much I hated LinkedIn. And you were the one who said, <laughs> well, you know, you can just connect with people I was like, really, you can do that. <laughs> and, uh, we actually set this live way back in, I think, September. And so my plan was to take a week. I was going to disconnect from everybody I didn't want to be friends with or connections with, I guess. And then I was going to start using LinkedIn. I was going to be this great expert. Everybody would be impressed, right? Well, the week, the week that I took off to fix my LinkedIn network, I disconnected from 234 people. And then LinkedIn shut down my account for 24 hours. They thought I was a bot. Oh, oh. So that was kind of sucked. Um, so anyway, it has been a very long process. I've gone from 15,000 people to just over 4,000. And wow. you have to do it a bit at a time. There's just, you know, no other way I found. The other thing that I learned was if you look at your connections and say you're sorting them by first name, starting at A, LinkedIn does not show you all of your connections each time. So I would go through, I would disconnect from all the A's I didn't want to be connected with. And then when I went through again, there would be all these new people. So ah. it's, not even, it's not even a job you can do like once. you got to just keep sorting through people. Um, so anyway, I I had to come up with a strategy to get my 15,000 down to what I wanted. Um, I, I have 12 sort of 12 things that I use to um, eliminate people that I'm happy to share with you guys. And I, I don't want to offend anybody like the people that I purged may not be the people that you purged. So, you know, it's this is what I did. This is what worked for me. So do you, want, do you want me to share how I eliminated? People? Sure, sure. And and okay. and just just to clarify to everybody that this is just one person's journey. 
So yes. everybody has to take this as like a smorgasbord of like, you look at everything that's on the table and you say, wow, you know, like there's the, what she didn't know, she didn't know, which was yeah. like LinkedIn shutting her down by doing it. You can't do it. You have to eat the elephant one bite at a time. And also too, it's, we have to, if you think of it as that garden analogy again, what would be a beautiful garden to me based upon who, you know, my business is totally different than you. And then, like you said, is totally different than a job hunter. So, or an employee at a corporation. So everybody, so this is not here. This is what you have to do. This is just Sue's journey and you will all have your own journey, but I will caution you. There's no instructions out there. So LinkedIn trainers, if you're watching, you go write articles about this now, because this is amazing. So Sue, yes, carry on with your journey. All right, so the first people I weeded were due to geography. I had a lot of people in my network from Australia. I had a lot of people from the Philippines. And I decided I really, the Solopreneur Academy has a lot of live events. And I didn't want to be doing what you do, Jillian, which is trying to like manage time zones and get up at 6 a.m. so that people can come to my events. So I really weeded out people who were not in the U.S. and Canada and I did not have a personal relationship with. So I still have connections in all those places, but they're people that I, I know. Sorry, I have to just checking page two of my notes here. Um, <laughs> The second thing I did was people. You covered up had, your camera. Whoops, you covered up I your did. camera. Oh, sorry. The second thing I did was to disconnect with people who had location dependent businesses. So that mm -hmm. was a big chunk of people in the United States that were massage therapists or property managers, um, yoga teachers, real estate agents, private chefs, physicians, all that kind of people. So that's the B to C because you're B to B and that just wasn't a good fit for you. Right. And, you know, I'm not going to use a real estate agent in Las Vegas, you know, yeah. or a, a yoga teacher in, you know, wherever. I mean, I'm in New York. So got it. Um, the next big chunk I got rid of are people in specific industries. So anyone that had to do anything with real estate, accounting, finance, investments, law or banking because those people I would get through a personal referral. Um, mm -hmm. Anything to do with cryptocurrencies and NFTs, anything to do with network marketing and franchising. I got rid of every, almost everyone in education. So teachers, professor, professors, consultants, uh, government employees, people in IT, engineering, app development, or anyone who was in some profession that I had never heard of or didn't understand, I got rid of them. Uh, people in healthcare, mostly physicians, dentists, chiropractors, therapists, uh, retail store managers and employees, um, if they weren't local, virtual assistants. Again, I have people that I would use rather than people on LinkedIn. Anybody in recruitment or headhunting, uh, people in construction and contracting, and most people who were corporate employees. So if you were an assistant to such and such or, you know, advertising, whatever. That makes sense. That makes sense. Um, the fourth group was students, retirees, people who were unemployed, and people who had blank descriptions of what they do. So mm. they were all gone. And then number five was people who had vague or unhelpful descriptions in their profile. It's amazing how many people, you know, some people just put consultant, professional, but there are a bunch of people that had like human being, lifelong learner, like just stuff that was meaningless. And then there are also a lot of people who, so my, my business, um, my LLC is called Sue Allen Clayton Consulting. When you put that on your LinkedIn description, that means nothing. Like sure. you have no idea what the person did. So unless I really wanted to go through and like click on their profile and look at it, they were all gone too. Um, I don't want to offend anyone with this one, but religious content, people that said they were child of God or loved Jesus or any of that, I, I got rid of. 
Um, any Number seven was any profile that had grammatical or spelling errors, because my background is a writer, that annoys me. Um, and then number eight was profiles that had words that annoyed me. So one was transformational coach. I don't even know what a transformational coach is, but I think about 80% of the coaches that I was connected with were education or were um, transformational coaches. Um, another word, I'm just turning off my phone. I've got it on mute, but it's it's going through. Um, another thing that word that really bothers me is bespoke. That's a UK term that means sort of something that is uh, created originally for a person. And that's just not a word we use in the United States. And every time I see that word, it's like, yeah, I don't, that's just a word I don't like. Um, and then the other part was profiles that had things that I really, promises that I thought were unrealistic, like, you know, or inappropriate for me. So, you know, um, increasing your followers by, you know, 10 times in three weeks or um, having a seven, you know, start a, start a new business and be at seven figures in, you know, 60 days, like that kind of stuff. I just didn't want to be part of. Um, I also got rid of profiles that have weird combinations of skills. So here's one. The person was an author, hypnotherapist, IT consultant, award-winning photographer, videographer, martial artist, and motion picture stuntman. That's a lot of hats. And, and if hats. I was going to hire a hypnotherapist, I would want somebody that all they did was hypnotherapy or a photographer. So yeah, when I saw people like that, it was like, no, that's just like too many hats. And yeah, didn't, didn't like that. Um, and then number 10 was services that I was not going to use. So one was a, in the UK, was a performance coach for elite wheelchair rugby players. That's, that, yep. that's specific, yep. not something I would use. And somebody else was a consultant to businesses about how to make them more friendly for service animals and seeing eye dogs. And again, really cool niche, but, you know, just nothing I would use. Um, number 11 was a little harder, and that was people I didn't like. So mm. there were a number of people that I knew through networking on Long Island, and I really didn't like them. Somehow they got to be part of my network. And um, that was just really hard to realize I didn't like these people in person. I don't like them after 10 years. Why do I have them in my network? Like, I do not have to do that. Cord. Yeah, cord. I, I did. And then uh, number 12 related to photos. So I really, you know, I just like a nice face to camera, clean photo. Not people. So if I didn't like their headshot or their photo, I would just get rid of them. And I actually weeded a lot of people out this way. I did not like people who were wearing hats or sunglasses. Um, ah! oh my I'm gosh. lucky I didn't get dumped. <laughs> no, you aren't. You aren't. Um, people who are doing that, like kissing the camera thing, you know, or like duck lips thing. Um, appropriate clothing. Like there was one guy who was a personal trainer and he just had his chest, which was sort of on brand, but you know, I'd rather see his face. A lot of women who showed like a lot of cleavage or just that I thought was inappropriate. Um, and it's my network, I can do that. Um, yep. People who, the picture was in groups, I got rid of them because I didn't know who the person was who was actually, you know, was their profile. Anything that looked like the person was drunk or, you know, the selfie in the bathroom mirror kind of thing. I, I got rid of that. And then um, also anything that didn't have decent lighting. So if the person looked like they were in the witness protection program or something, they were out of my network. So, so that's how got I did it. it. That's how I got from my 15,000 to my, you know, four, little over 4,000. And it is still a work in progress. I will continue to do it. I've been doing it just... Um, 
in front of the TV because it's, you know, something it's kind of mindless. And uh, so what's your process? So what's what's your actual process? Are you going to your network and then sorting them alphabetically? You said you had to do that a couple of times because it doesn't always show you everybody in every letter. But did you have a system? Did you have a piece of paper that, OK, I'm at A? Like, what was your actual process? So I did keep track of where I was. I started using um, first names beginning with A and then working through it. But what I actually found was easier because I had connected with so few people originally or recently was to start with my recent connections and then just mm -hmm. go through and leave that window open. And then I would just go back to it wherever I left off. And that was a okay. far easier way to do it then, because when I was sorting by name, every time, you know, I did something, got out of it, then I would have to go through and I would have to like go through the A's again to wherever I was. So, yeah, I just started with the best way is with recent connections and then just kind of going down and leaving that window open. And I had mm -hmm. a second window open where I kept track of the number of connections so that I knew I wasn't going to go over that 234 level and have my account be um, kicked off. Smart, smart. So it's good. So it's good that you created a process for yourself that worked for you. And I'm assuming that by showing recent connections, maybe LinkedIn is a little bit better about sh showing you your whole network as opposed to when you were just going alphabetically and then they'd be like, here's nope. a little bit, here's a little bit. No? Nope, they're not. They 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 are not. <laughs> I still do they, it. I still do they it. only show you a percentage of your network. And yeah, so every time I've you know, done something and I've closed it down by mistake or something and I've started back at the beginning, there are people who I have never seen before. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. That's yeah. that's really interesting. And, and a lot. But that's interesting. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know what percentage and I was trying to find it out and I couldn't, but I don't know what percentage they show you. I don't know if it's based on, I mean, there's probably some algorithm that, that does it. No, but, none um, of us know. <laughs> no, none it's a secret, know. so. Yes, yes, yes. Well, I see we have some comments. Let me start addressing our comments. Looking forward to some gardening tips from Jillian and Sue Ellen Clayton. Namaste. Thank you, Jeff. Uh, hi, Jillian and Sue. And from Leslie, and a big hello to Jeff. Uh, fellow friend here. Hi there. Looking forward to today's ses session from Stacy Luft. Uh, Jeff Young says, uh, howdy. I love how people party in the comments. Connect with anyone who can fog a mirror. Bad idea. And that that is that is so true that it's like, I think I think what it is, is that there's no filter. There's no filter when we first start on LinkedIn. And I did the opposite to Sue of I connected with a lot of people when I started my LinkedIn network, but I was doing outbound connecting. If I was sitting there waiting for people to connect with me, it was like crickets. So I decided to do outbound connecting and connecting with, oh, you know, I went to this event, I'll connect with everybody. And I found out I did too many connections in one day and I got locked out. And that's actually how I found John Asperian because I, I thought I was in LinkedIn jail. So I needed help and I followed him. And then I kind of learned, oh, there's some parameters for using LinkedIn. So sometimes we accept them without the filter. And sometimes we're doing outbound connecting without a filter, just trying to get bodies in the room. Neither one is a good plan. It, it's really about quality over quantity, right? That's that's the bottom line. Yeah. Um, Jeff says, I know what it's like to have LinkedIn think you're a bot, Sue. Not much fun. Thank you. <laughs> so Jeff. how long how, how long were you locked out, Sue? 24 hours. 24 hours. Wow. Did. So do they just like they sent me um a notice and it was not a friendly kind of notice. I mean, it was a few months ago, so I don't recall it exactly, but it was basically we're locking you out and if this happens again, you know, we'll take further action kind of thing. It, it scared me. Like it really scared me that I was going to lose my account. So, it scared wow. me enough that I stayed under that threshold for sure. Wow. Wow, that that's 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 and I remember you posted about that um, mm -hmm. when you got when you got I guess 
let back into the <laughs> LinkedIn right. room. I know you posted about that. And I remember other people on your uh, replying in the comments saying that happened to me too. And I think that you had kind of like put a post out there and said, Hey, does anybody know that sort of magic number? And, you know, a lot of people were saying, yeah, it happened to me too. So, you know, this is just something where we do get scared when all of a sudden that yeah. happens because we depend on these social channels. So, you know, you want to kind of color within the lines, but sometimes we don't, if we don't know what those lines are, how, how, how are we to know? Cause there's nothing written down anywhere that has all these numbers. Right. So, and, crazy. and I don't know if that 234 is the same number for everybody, or if it's a percentage of your network Good or point. anything. Yeah. Good point. Good point. So probably the moral of the story is eat that elephant in small bites. If you're going to do something like this, it's probably small, consistent, regular effort. And, you know, maybe you have like, okay, I'm going to do it every day for 10 minutes and then I'm just going to move on and, you know, and just, you know, whittle it down, whittle it down as opposed to, okay, I'm taking the Christmas break. <laughs> I'm right. going to do all this stuff. Don't, don't do that. Don't do that. Bye bye Bitcoin. <laughs> That's so true. That's so true. And I'm sure that your parameters that you use that were personal for you about, okay, how I'm going to prune my network and get rid of the weeds that were weeds for you is now going to be your filter that you're putting in place for moving forward. Is that true, Sue? It, it's totally true. I mean, I, I've connected with a few people, but I I look at them. I look at their profile. I look at what they do. I, I really am very intentional now about who I let into my into my network for sure. I love that. I love that. And I love the word intentional because to me, it's almost like, well, you know, it, it's funny. Uh, to me, it's like a golden ticket. Every time you you connect, uh, you accept a request, uh, 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 a connection request. It's like a you only have so many golden tickets, and you're giving somebody a golden ticket because you're letting them into your network. You're not only letting them connect with you. It's like you're giving them access to all of your people because now they're going to see your connections and they might want introductions and they're you know they're they're going to be part of. You know, it's like if you have like a little circle at the party, we're, we're opening the door and letting them join our circle where we're having the conversations. And I think that's really important to be very selective. And especially too, I, I don't remember what the number is. So maybe someone like Jeff or John or Kevin Turner or, you know, anybody like that who's listening that knows this magic number. But I believe there's a number of how many people you can connect with, period, in your lifetime, even if you delete some. It's like there is a threshold. So we do have to, you know, kind of say, oh, yeah, okay, yeah, you you only have 200 connections now, but you have to think long term. One day you might get to a point where you're just like, oh, I maxed out, but I I'm not done. I'm not done building relationships. So right. and, and I didn't know on. that I didn't know there was a threshold. And I I did look up the number and I it was a while ago and I can't remember what it is. But yes, there is a threshold. So that. So that was an issue I didn't know anything about when I was just like accepting, you know, connecting with everybody. And also, I did not give any thought to the fact that, yeah, these people I am. It's not just me that I'm letting into their network. It's the other 15,000 people I'm connected with. And yes. I think I mean, I can't believe that I really didn't think about that until this summer, but I didn't. And so, yeah, that's another thing. It's like, do I want this person to have access to my network? Um, and a lot of times, so that weighs on my mind as I'm deciding whether I want to have somebody join me or not. Yes. Yes. And I think this is also a good reason why, you know, if you, if you move to creator mode and you have that follow first, you can have, actually, you could, you don't need creator mode to have follow first, but having follow first, once you kind of hit that 500 range, some people actually say more like 5,000, but when you get to a certain threshold of like, this is as many people as I really feel comfortable with. I feel like I have a good size network. So now I want to kind of, you know, kind of go on cruise control with my network for a little bit. Switching to that follow first is like such a good thing. Are you on that now, Sue? Follow yes, first? Yes, I am. 
Yeah. Okay. That that's that's yeah. good to know. So Stacy says Bitcoin and MLM is the quickest way to get ignored or removed from me. And you know, we all have our things. You know, we all have our things. And I always look at it that like, would I enjoy seeing your posts in my newsfeed? That's probably the most important thing to me because I I kind of you know think okay, maybe I won't necessarily need your services, but maybe we could still help each other. But to me, I am a content consumer. So I like to see good content. And I know when I started on LinkedIn, because I was connecting with way too many people that were not the right fit for me, I didn't enjoy my feed. And if you don't enjoy your feed, then why would you come on LinkedIn? You, you're not going to have any conversations with topics that don't interest you. So, well, and that's, that was, you know, that was exactly what happened to me. I mean, I had a guy that in my network that ran a shoe store in Bangladesh. Like that's, I, I don't enjoy, that's not somebody I would ever be friends with in person. And I really thought about that too. Is it somebody I would want to have coffee with? Is it somebody I would want to work with? It was, is it somebody I could potentially refer people to? So, but yeah, that, that like factor was, was really very high. And, and I have to say like disconnecting with those people on Long Island that I didn't like, that, that just hurt my heart to do that. It felt so freeing when I did, but it's like, but wait, am I not serious about my business? Couldn't these people help Mm -hmm. me? And it's like, I don't like them. I don't, I don't want to work with them. I don't want to work with people that like them, you know? Yeah. And, and, you know, maybe that's another thing too. It's like you literally look at somebody and say, if I got a DM from you, would I want to answer it? If I, if I wouldn't want to answer it, I probably shouldn't be connected with you. Maybe I could follow you. Maybe you could follow me, but it's like, if I really wouldn't want to take your call, you know, I wouldn't want to take your message. Maybe you're just not a good fit for me. And I think that's, that's really valid. Um, Stacy is saying great point about the time zones of people you work with. That is so important because everybody's business is different. I'm international. So I'm like way cool with people all over the world. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I just have to stay on track of it. You know, my math gene has to kick in and, you know, do that conversion. But for other people, if you, you know, like you said, if I was a massage therapist working in Las Vegas, it probably would not serve me to have customers that were over in France. It, it just wouldn't be a good fit for me no. unless it was another massage therapist, you know, so you just have to kind of look and see how that, how that happened. Oh, we're starting again. So it always, it always happens. We're 30 minutes today. And if we start just refresh, it goes back to the beginning and, Oh, it, that's strange that it says an hour. No, we're only 30 minutes today. We're only 30 minutes today. Um, okay. So we always have these weird technical glitches with LinkedIn. Okay. Sue Allen Clayton. I do not accept anyone without a decent profile pick. That is a great tip. That's a great tip, yeah. Marcia, yeah. because, you know, we do judge a book by its cover. You know, you, you say never judge a book by its cover, but we do. And we judge people by their cover. We judge people by their photo. And that's why, you know, like, I can kind of tell you, you mentioned the pit, the, the duck lips, yeah. <laughs> the duck lips photos. And, you know, invariably, if I see a picture and my brain goes, what? And I do a double take, it's usually a bot. Like if I have another closer look at it, it's, it's, it's usually a bot. It's usually not, it's a fake profile because all of a sudden it's like the most gorgeous woman with her duck lips, but it's she's selling Bitcoin and she's an oil engineer for Esso or something like that. And she lives in all of the United States. And you're just like, OK, can you say fake profile? You know, yeah. so I think the important thing is keep your professional, you know, keep your pictures professional. Make sure that they look up to date. You know, we don't want to see you from 20 years ago. That doesn't make any sense. You know, those those things are so important because we do judge a book by its cover. Okay. So what what else do we have here? Um, it's always a learning. Uh, so Marcia says, it is always a learning experience for me each week. I, I think she means, well, she probably means this LinkedIn Live, but it's it's so true that, you know, 
what we're learning, what we're learning about LinkedIn. It's like we learn a little bit, we do a little bit, we learn a little bit, we do a little bit. We have uh, Jane, hello from Germany. So we got Germany coming in today. So I, that's the one thing I love about these LinkedIn lives. They're all over the world, which is like great. Great for me. Great for me. I like all time zones. So this is wonderful. This is wonderful. Okay. Uh, Jeff says it must be limit. It must be a limiting number, Sue. I know that since I only have 600 first degree connections, I can see my whole network when I look. So that's a really interesting point. So right. Jeff is one who is 40 plus, 40, 40,000, not 40 plus, 40,000 plus, who has purposely. So Jeff is kind of like the poster child of what to do right, and that he has purposely kept his network very, very small. If you think about it, 600 first degree connections is a really, really small network. Everyone else is a follower. Everyone else is a follower. So, you know, and the thing is, is you can still be open to messages. So that's something that I do that even if I don't accept somebody's connection request, because I too am trying to keep my network manageable, I am, I open up my in-mail to other people can contact me and stuff like that. And then again, that's a personal choice. Some people might say, nope, you know, some people, you know, you got to have an email to even connect with them. Like you can really have those parameters down well. So, okay. So we, we've hit our 30 minute mark, Sue. So okay. what would you say is sort of like that takeaway you'd, you'd send us home with today? I think the takeaway is just to be intentional in what you do. So figure out what a weed is, figure out the size of your garden, figure out, you know, who you want to connect with, some parameters to make it easy. And, and then I think just trust yourself, right? That that is creating a network that you want and is going to make you be excited on LinkedIn. I like that. I like that. That's great. Well, thank you very much for being on the show today. It's been awesome. And I appreciate all the advice. And like I said, LinkedIn, LinkedIn trainers out there, uh, make some instructions for us because this would this would be good so that we don't get ourselves into this. And if we are into this, how do we get out of it? So, you know, give us some give us some great instructions. We would really appreciate that. And reference is live because you heard it here. You heard it here. So everyone, thank you very much for joining today. Thank you, Sue, for being here. And we will see you all again next week on LinkedIn Live with Jillian and friends. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Bye-bye.